Well, we finally made it out of Kenai and drove down to Homer. Had a beautiful day to fly across Cook Inlet, so we loaded up our boats and gear for about three weeks onto a beaver and flew across um, Cook Inlet. Got these epic views of Iliamna and Mount Augustine on the flight over. Flew through the, the Alaska Range and then down into the Lake Iliamna area where it just turns into total flat, one of the weirdest places I've ever gone to go kayaking. No big mountains or big canyons visible, but apparently there's some big white water, some big waterfalls, and some big fish out here. So excited to be here, um, but the weather turned and it's just been super rainy and windy and cold. Water super high, which could be a good thing. Um, we'll see here soon when we go to look at the Tizimina waterfall, which could be really good to go. Otherwise, we really just need the weather to clear for any possibility to go fly out anywhere. Um, but we also have a dilemma with our main pilot out here, Jerry Jakes, his old whitewater boater. Just had some mechanical issues with one of his airplanes, so that's down. He's flying double shifts, and we're kind of stuck here waiting for, for the best. So we're gonna go get access to, to Zimina and check that out and uh, possibly run a big 70, 80 footer. And if that doesn't work out, then probably go run the New Halen, which we know is super good. After Todd and Parker's trip here two years ago, they did a few laps on it and had a blast surfing these huge waves, running some pretty big whitewater and uh, finding some pretty epic salmon and trout fisheries down there too. So. I know there's some amazing, amazing holes that we're probably the only ones we'll be able to access via kayak in between some big waterfalls and big rapids. Woo! And it is really high. Probably about like twice the flow as two years ago when we were last year, uh, which we deemed it too low then and now it might be too high. We're gonna cruise up top and get some eyes on the lip of the falls so last time we were here at Tizimina Falls, it was a little too low, and I thought, man, this, this river could handle a lot more water, but right now it is really, really high, maybe too high. So we're gonna go up and kind of look at it just straight on and right above it, but it's freaking frothy right now, real big. So after a good long scout, we determined it's just too high to run right now. It's crazy, just another, you know, the Alaska factor is, is always here and doesn't make anything easy, so. I guess that's just the way she goes. We'll have to come back for the big boy next time. In the meantime, New Halen's waiting just out our back door, so we are gonna go fire up some laps on that. See what we can't find. It's not raining right now, it's kinda nice. I got my two fishing rods salmon slayer and a trout catcher. It's a tiny little net that probably not gonna fit a salmon in, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> Hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll find some secret fishing holes that no one else can get to. Yeah, they just bumped up the limit of sockeye salmon to five fish, so we're gonna go try and fill up the back of our boats, have some food for the rest of the trip so we can quit eating PB&Js and quinoa and uh, get some real meat in our diet. <laughs>
could see salmon just like trying to get upstream and then surfing the biggest wave and there's this big like like 15 20 foot standing wave and salmon just like come down the face of it just cruising down and then peel off into the eddy and uh, I saw it when I was in there too like went through the first curler came up to the first big wave and there was like a fish surfing down right in front of me and then I got a little spun around in the boil at the bottom but um, one of the most insane places I've ever been and surely we're gonna catch some salmon and maybe even some big trout so we're gonna grab out the fishing rod and give it a try Right next door to where we've been camping, we met these uh, these fishing guys that said they had an old bucket boat in, in their in their garage. That ought to do it, huh? I think so. We'll see. Should get us down the river. So we blew up the boat, and uh, it was still holding air great. So we uh, did a couple more runs in our kayaks, figuring out the the lines to this whitewater because. Even after years of guiding, I was still pretty nervous to take a raft down because it's just huge, huge volume, some big features, and uh, definitely don't want to screw up and flip. But we were real excited to, to figure out this run and take these locals down because this is kind of their backyard stretch that they never get to go explore because it's just such big white water and really need a team that knows the river well. And we had this extra safety kayakers there just in case something went wrong. So we found some old gear laying around in the shed and uh, put together what we needed to, to get these guys down and uh, go search for some, some epic fishing holes that no one ever gets to touch. And I am nervous, <laughs> but really excited. Neoprene layer. Okay. Straight out of the 70s. It's Jake's on it. Does it really? Sleeve zips. Wow. Yeah. We're going after big rainbows. In order to do that, we've got you guys who are kayak experts trying to take us into a place where we can fulfill our, 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 our rainbow needs. Uh, we need some professionals, and it's where these rainbows have been living for a long time. They don't see humans. We're, we're after that adventure. We're after that place that is not on the map. <laughs> 